I'm going up community, John here. Uh, just a little follow up video to um, my last video where I began to show some of the vinyl finds I've made over the summer in uh, car boot sales and uh, charity shops here in the UK. Um, so I've got a few more of those to show and then uh, I guess after that I'll, you know, the next video is I'll go on to the next batch. Um, some news is that, uh, not really vinyl related I guess, that I had a, a Swedish crayfish party here at, uh, at my house um, on Saturday evening. I invited um, the local uh, Swedes in, are they Swedes in Cardiff or Swedes in South Wales? I can't remember now, but it's like a Swedish group of people from Sweden that live here in Wales and get together and celebrate Swedish things. Um, and uh, we had a, a great time eating a crayfish and the, the style that the Swedes do with lots of songs and uh, snaps. Um, you can see some of that here. Okay, so what well, I'm going to show you these. Um, we're listening to this album. This is sort of a reissue of um, River Deep Mountain High, which is, I really like this album. Uh, I picked this up because it was, well, cost me a quid. And uh, it's sort of got this different cover, sort of like a reissue cover. Um, good record though, if you see it, grab it. It's well worth it. Um, okay. The first record I'm going to show is uh, a British heavy metal uh, album by a band called Rothschild. Apparently there was a, a band called Rothschild in the States as well. Um, so in the States these are called Rothschild UK. Um, they're described as being you know, a new wave of heavy metal but at the same time they're also described as being sort of glam, glam rock. You know, they're, they're a bit like uh, they, yeah, they wouldn't be out of place on a bill close to Motley Groove, for instance. Um, but there's definitely a very sort of uh, British metal style here too as well. Not a bad record. I've never heard of them before, so quite fun to find that. I'll bring it home and clean it up. Um, this was a pretty good find. A lovely copy. Um, very well preserved. Um, you can see it's, uh, you know, in great shape on the threshold. So this is the, uh, I can't remember, is it the third or the fourth album by the Moody Blues? Um, it's one that I didn't have. I've got most of their stuff, um, uh, you know, several times over. Um, 
I had this on cassette, <laughs> but now I've got it on vinyl. Okay, Utopia. Ted Rundgren. I haven't listened to that. You know, I hear all the time Ted Rundgren is, uh, you know, what a great influence he was on a lot of people. And, uh, you know, he certainly put himself around. He's got a hand in a lot of uh, famous records, uh, either as a musician or uh, in production. Um, and, uh, yeah. I've got quite a few of his and, and Utopia records, but uh, I've yet to sort of find time to really immerse myself in them. Maybe when I retire, maybe. Um, I can't remember if I've shown this one before or not. This is Lulu. Lulu was a, um, a pop star in the 60s from Scotland. Um, she, what can I tell you? She's quite an iconic figure here in the UK. Um, she's sort of famous for this sort of, uh, how you describe it, sort of a raspy kind of tear to her voice sometimes when she when she wrinkles up her nose and blasts out. Um, and, uh, oh, quite a fun little pop record, I suppose. Mm. I don't, can't really think much more to say about Lulu except that she's kind of an iconic 60s figure. Uh, and here's another one, or perhaps not quite as iconic as Lulu, but this is Cilla Black. Um, now Cilla Black, this, this would have been produced by George, My, uh, George Martin. Um, she comes from Liverpool, and uh, I think she was on the same management as, as the Beatles, I believe. I could be wrong. Um, she's recently died, Cilla. Um, and I spent some time looking at some footage of her as sort of like in her early days as a pop star. Um, and I was quite impressed with what I saw. I just assumed that she would perhaps be another sort of, I don't know, sort of a 60s bimbo and making, making pop music. But uh, the impression I got from the footage that I saw and, and some of her sort of, you know, in-studio performances was more that she was a... She was a serious musician, um, and she took took um, what she was doing, George Martin, George Martin, quite seriously. Um, I know she was big pals with the, with the Beatles. Um, she kind of become more known here in the UK as, uh, as sort of a, a celebrity that presented um, you know, game shows and things like that um, in the 80s and perhaps early 90s. She used to do a program called Blind Date. Um, um, which is a bit kitschy, but uh, no, it's, it's interesting to listen to her music. I'd love to get some of the, the earlier records. Um, this was a bit further along, it's come out about 1970, this one. Um, and I grabbed it. it it's not, not really what I want to hear. I'd like to get some of the early 60 records, so uh, I'll keep my eye out for those, but I'll hang on to this until I find something more. An interest to me, so uh, I picked up quite a few Dino Ross and Supremes albums. You see a lot of them, especially compilations. Now, this isn't a compilation, this is Dino Ross and the Supremes, uh, The Temptations, an album called Together. I think it's quite a nice cover. Um, so, this is an original album on the Motown. Come on, Motown. And, um, yeah, the thing is with the Supremes, I mean, you know, a lot of people know the hits. Um, it's, it's fun to familiarise yourself with, uh, you know, a lot of the other music that they made. Um, here's a good example of a Diana Ross and the Supremes compilation. <laughs> um, good record. This is Diana Ross and the Supremes, Baby Love. And this one is particularly good. I really enjoyed this. This is Diana Ross and the Supremes live at London's uh, Talk of the Town. So it's a live album. 
and uh, from 1968. Uh, really interesting to hear them sort of perform live. And <clears throat> uh, there was one particular track on here. They do, yeah, they do uh, sort of a, a Beatles medley on the end of side one. Um, the first bit is Michel, and it bleeds into uh, Yesterday. Uh, which is quite nice to hear. And they do a few other kind of really fun songs on here too. Um, the Lady is a Tramp. <laughs> um, yeah, I really enjoyed this record. Um, I'm glad I had it. And it, it, it says, it's great condition. And I paid a pound for it. You know. so, I mean, and this wasn't even dirty when I got it. It was quite nicely taken care of. Sometimes, I don't know about the rest of you, but sometimes I just want to say to the people that are selling these at car boot sales, you know, do you really know what, you, what you're selling? <laughs> this is a lovely thing to have. Um, but some people treat them as, you know, almost uh, sort of like a cardboard box value. Uh, okay, so this is an album by Ultravox. Um, Momentum the sounds track, so it's a live, it's a live album. I would have called it an EP, because it's only got six tracks. Um, but, uh, there you go. Yeah, and it's, it is basically, sort of their big, the big hits, Vienna, Him, Monument, Reap the Wild Wind, The Voice. I mean, these are sort of, you know, very sort of standard uh, Ultravox tracks being played live. Um, but it's it's not a bad thing to have. Um, the Ultravox, you know, they were sort of part of the new romantic movement. Um, although I've always considered them as being perhaps a little bit more, oh, as a phrase, this a little bit more serious. Not that the new romantics weren't serious; they obviously were. But I don't know. They they seem to sort of appeal to a, a an older, more mature audience, and uh, less of the sort of the, the the younger teen fan base type thing. Um, and of course, it's, yeah, mid year. Who, uh, together with uh, Bob Goldoff, basically sort of put Live Aid and Band Aid together. Um, Midyear's done all sorts of, sort of stuff involved with lots of other musicians and things. I think he even played guitar for Thin Lizzy at one point. I'm sure. Um, so that's that's Ultra Box. Um, okay, Van Halen, OU812. Um, fun to pick up. I think this is about the only one of their albums that I didn't that I didn't already have. So uh, yeah, nice to have, nice to pick up. Well, I can see this could do a bit of a clean. I think after this, they started to lose appeal. Um, this came out around about, when did this come out? Um, I can't see when it came out. But when it did come out, it was roughly when I was sort of starting to get into um, hard rock music. And uh, at the time, I couldn't tell the difference between Sammy Hagar's vocals and uh, Dave Lee Roth. So, um, I can now, but at the time I always remember that, you know, they say, they, they seemed kind of synonymous to me, but uh, now they've got very distinct, different sort of styles. And the last one I'm going to show is a UFO compilation, a collector's series. Um, it's, uh, I've always liked UFO. Um, I've always been quite curious in sort of a lot of their earlier music, the first sort of three albums. I've got um, Force It by UFO, which I think is brilliant. I really, really like it. It's one of my favourite uh, heavy metal records, I guess. 
Um, and I, what I particularly like about it is that you can really hear, although this isn't documented, but you, I think you can really hear um, how Iron Maiden had listened to, to that record quite a lot and uh, drawn a lot of inspiration. Um, so, yeah, this basically is a compilation of some of their earlier music, um, I think from the first two or maybe three albums. Um, good to have, again. Yeah, so each of these, I would have paid a pound for each of these. Maybe a pound fifty here and there, but certainly not more than that. Uh, okay, everybody, thanks very much for watching. Just a little uh, instalment there. Um, i got uh, lots more records to show. And, um, well, thanks everybody for, you know, comments on my on my videos and things. I've got quite a lot the last time. Lots of uh, greetings from people welcoming me back to the VC over the, uh, after the summer. Um, I'm trying really hard to catch up with watching people's videos. Um, I'll get there in the end eventually. But if I don't, if I don't uh, respond to your comments, it's not that I'm not going to. It's just that I just haven't got to that point in time yet. All right. Well, thanks very much. Look out for my next video. Thanks. Bye.